Hi guys, Brett here from Hearns Hobbies and today I'm going to take a look at and start building HB Racing's latest eight scale nitro buggy, the mighty D8WS or World Spec. So this is their latest buggy. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. I haven't had the chance to build one of these yet. This one here is actually going to go to a very special race over in Vietnam with one of our team drivers. But yeah, so join me on part one of this build. Right, let's open the box up. Beautiful big box. Boom, we'll be needing these, the instructions. Stick a sheet, can put that one to the side. All right, now HB have this wonderful system of bags and bags in bags. So they make it nice and simple, A. And I reckon that's exactly where we are going to be starting. But let's have a look what we've got. A and B. That's a really good start. I'm not going to go any further and do a whole big box in here. Oh, might need these fluids. Um, but I'm just going to put this to the side. And we'll get on with the build. So, HB Racing. Synonymous with performance 8 scale racing gear. 10 scale too, but I think more famous for their world championship winning eight scale buggies. So got some basic instructions here, required hardware to go. So you're gonna need a couple of servos, radio gear. You're gonna need your receiver pack. You're gonna need your batteries for your transmitter, your engine, body. This kit does not come with a body. It doesn't come with wheels and tires, nor exhaust or a battery charger. Some of the tools that will be required. And for the tools, I've got my mighty nine steps little tool kit there. Included items are some shock oils. Um, now, to be honest, I'm actually not going to be using those shock oils. I'm going to be putting my own setup into this. It's going to be a very specific purpose, this, this kit. It's going to Femca 2024. So, and here we have, and it's updates, bag A, funnily enough. And they're really clear and concise instructions telling you exactly how to build your shocks. Now I've built a shock or two in my time and very clearly it's telling you to build them with the bladders. So I won't be doing that, I'll be building these emulsion style. So there'll be a little bit of air above the top of the piston. Um, I know it sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but it gives a more sort of supple, sort of supple feel and good for long 45 minute buggy mains that they do in nitro. Pretty easy to bleed as well. So I'll show you what goes into that and then we get into our diffs. But let's get our shocks out the way first. Um, and I sort of like that they do, a lot of people like to do the shocks last, but I like to do the shocks and the diffs first and get all the oils and the messy stuff out of the way and continue with the clean chassis build. All right, so let's have a look at these shocks. What have we got here? Bag A. Got my uh, nine step hobby knife here. And like I said, this bag will be full with Plenty of other bags. A1 and A2. There we go. Rubbish down there. Let's start with A1. These look like front shocks. And I can tell they're front shocks by the shorter springs and the shorter body, bodies, etc. Everything's individually wrapped and bagged. A whole set of pistons. How good is HB? These whole Delrin pistons here, a whole set. Um, some people drill them and do custom things with them, but I've already got a setup in mind for this car based on previous sort of speaking to people and seeing the track. Um, and being HB, it's got a pretty big tuning window. So HBs are pretty forgiving. Got our shock boots. These are a really cool little thing. They just keep all the crap off your shocks and going into them. Again, it's the, the bladders I was talking about. Now, when we come to that part, you can cut them um, or use O-rings. And I will actually be using O-rings in there. And here's my shock bodies. Okay. Get these all out. Beautiful, hard, anodized. Super high quality aluminium and finishing on the parts with HB. Premium quality product, premium quality parts. 
shock adjusting collar. I'm actually going to do something a little bit sneaky with those as well. With my nine step standing sanding stick. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into the shocks. I'm going to put the front shocks over here on one side of the of the screen because if you're doing one shock, you may as well do all four. Get the rear shocks out of the bag. Now most of the hardware in the shocks is the same. Um, the biggest difference just being the shock shafts being longer and the shock bodies uh, and of course the springs. But the pistons and the O-rings and all that sort of stuff will be identically the same front and rear. Get out my small parts bag. Um, and what I love about this sweep pit mat is that it just holds everything nice and smooth and clean. Saves it bouncing away. If you've ever built a car on a coffee table, a glass coffee table or dining table, you know how precarious that can be with stuff bouncing all over the shop. Here we go. Little O-ring in there. Even the shock balls, the shock mounting balls here are anodized aluminium to keep them extremely lightweight um, like I said this is a pedigree premium racing buggy so definitely all the highest quality parts and and fittings going into it and the shock shafts are absolutely massive must be four mil I reckon all right so what I'm going to do now is open up the that sorry what i'm going to do now is actually polish the shock shafts now that's not necessary and i know most people will not do that however i'm not most people and i know the intent of this buggy is going to be a big race so i'm just going to give it a really light polish um and it's not that it's not at all polished let's zoom in there and have a look at the quality look at the quality of the finish there um, but I am going to get that to a mirror kind of finish. And again, it's not absolutely necessary, but, you know, it's these little one percenters that can make all the difference. I've got some uh, auto sole here, which is some quality metal polish. And I've got a Nan's favourite tea towel. Nice cotton tea towel here. It's going to put a little bit on the tea towel. Apply a little bit to the, the shock shaft and give him a bit of a rub. Now you can do that in a Dremel if you want something high speed. It's not going to need a lot of work. Excuse the noise. Get a little bit of heat into it. Like so. And you can see all the black there. Go to a clean part of the rag. Wipe it all off. And there we go. Didn't take merely, just be careful not to burn yourself in case it's hot. Didn't take merely two minutes. And again, you can even work on it more than that if you want, but that is mirror to the eye anyway we'll show you the, the difference let's get a zoom in I'm not sure if the, even the camera will catch it but that is the polished one and that is the out of the OEM one you can see here it just looks a different color just from the reflection but yeah so not a huge difference, but a difference nonetheless. And it's a little small thing that you can do. Again, just, just to lift up your buggy game. Excuse the noise again. I'm just gonna zip through these other three. Mind me.
being careful not to burn myself in case it is hot. Just wipe it off. Last thing you want to do is have any shock, uh, any metal polishing compound in your actual shock assembly. Second last one. And you only need the smallest amount. And whether it's 10 scale, 8 scale, the only time I generally don't do this is if it is DLC or, uh, or nitride coated shocks. DLC, diamond like coating, so they're a black coated. Or if it's nitride, which is gold coated shock shaft. In that case there, I generally won't use a, polish, a polishing compound. But I will still give them a little bit of a polish, just in a nice, clean, cotton rag with no compounds. Just to make sure that there's no residue or any imperfections from manufacturing. And what that is going to hopefully do as well is help the shocks, the shafts glide smoother, so less stiction in the damper unit, um, and also help the O-rings uh, last longer. Definitely not a critical step, but something that I thought that you might like to see. I'll also do it with the hinge pins. That is four shock shafts polished. Make sure there's no XX residue. And it's actually a good way to check if you're doing it when you rebuild your buggy, you will pick up if you've got a, even the slightest bend uh, in your shock shaft. You might not even pick it when it's in the car of course, the other way is just to, to roll it on a nice flat piece of glass and you'll see if there's any bend or buckle in your shock shaft, at which point you definitely have to replace it. But these ones are all brilliantly machined, of course, and now they're super polished. Just being fussy. Okay. I'm going to pop that away. Okay, now we can start with the cartridges. And by the cartridges, I mean the bottom of the shocks. And for that, I'm using XTR O-ring grease. Rubber and O-ring grease. And my Nine Steps Gizmo tool. Nice little plastic tool here. Very um, versatile, I suppose. And I just put a little bit in the lid like so pick the o-ring up and there's going to be two in each damper unit just roll them around in the oil in the grease sorry and what that grease is going to do is make sure that a you're not going to get it caught on any burrs or anything in the assembly process and B, um, it's going to keep any dirt out of the shock assembly because you've filled any, any uh, space with grease. And C, it's going to actually protect the O-rings from the, the silicon oil. 
so the silicon ore is not corrosive but it will over time cause the the shafts uh, sorry the the o-rings to swell up causing stiction so very typical so we put again just do one at a time one o-ring nice clean rag we've got the the guide we've got another o-ring like so and then we've got the the bush and that will only go the other the bottom shot guide and it's all beautifully machined out of this Delrin kind of material super strong and super smooth put a little bit of extra on here to make sure that it seals there should be a little o-ring that can pop over the the cap here and then you put the bottom collar on now it's important not to tighten this one up yet because we don't want it uh, introduce any preload onto the o-ring because we want to make it nice and easy for when we push the shock shaft through okay so that's one front one done like I said if you build one you may as well build all four at once o-ring guide whoops guide o-ring Then the top guide. A little bit of extra grease on here. Put in my sealing o ring. If I can find it. Where did I put my sealing o ring? Aha, uh -huh. inside the shock boot, of course. I was going to say, it's not like HB to be missing parts from a kit. There we go. This one on. Start on the rear ones. Lots of bag opening. So it's nice to give yourself a nice big space to work, especially with these eight scale cars, because actually, especially towards the end of the build, obviously when they're complete, you need quite a big uh, bench space to, to have them. Okay, I'll keep my front shock shaft over here with the front shocks. O-ring. Guide, O-ring, top guide. Put on my seal. Okay, one body. Shock body. And I don't like to use Allen keys or hobby knives around the O rings. Um, just in risk of scoring them. But the nine steps um, Gizmo is doing a perfect job. Now the O rings hiding in here here we go put this one on just roll it over the threads put the bottom cartridge cap on beautiful put the grease to the side for the moment and we can start on our shock shafts front shock shafts having smaller shock ends so if you do have everything out of the packet at once just be you can see the top one here is five mil or so shorter than the, the rear one, so don't get them confused, allowing you more rear droop. 
and then we'll go ahead with our pistons. Now for this one, I am going to go eight hole 1.3 on the rear and eight hole 1.2 on the front. And that's gonna give it a nice supple feel um, and but with quite heavy weight oil in there will give it really good jumping and landing characteristics so it's going to be on a high grip track so we don't need to push the tires into the ground really hard at slow speed but yeah it will help give us a lot of packs so it'll give us nice control at um you know slow speed undulations but then it will provide a lot of pack in the shock um a lot of pressure for when we're going over the big stuff so the front 1.2 1.3s because i'm using different pistons front and rear i can just use them from the same bag put on my piston and then the nut like so now something you're going to need is really nice soft jaw pliers like I've got here really nice these multifunction pliers and a 5 mil hex driver which I am currently without of course being a 5 mil no other better tool than the magic to me a box wrench now the pistons don't need to be done up tight they do have a nylock on there so like I said 1.2 on the front you want to tighten them up so they can spin smoothly but without having any slop in the in the piston you want to be able to let it move around, not be too affected by heat, like so. But no, no play in the piston, but you don't have to lock it down and so fact and so tight that you break your piston like I've seen people do. It does have a nylock, it will not come off. Okay, front one. 1.2 again in the soft jaw pliers, making sure not to, I'm not even putting it on the polish part if I can help it. It's best just to tighten it, over tighten it so slightly and then back it off just a smidge. Rear ones, 1.3s. Now there is an orientation to the pistons, I will show you on the next one there's a washer underneath to help it seat and get a nice face and it'll also be super strong so tighten it up and then back it off a smidge beautiful so there's the washer on the top now the piston does have an indentation on one side perfectly flat on the the lower side so that's the side that goes on now with this piston set they even give you a pair in each packet of blank pistons so you can actually drill them to suit your own special um, you know your own secret sort of specs so I know a lot of people will choose uh, or put different size piston it's different holes in the piston the self different size orifice so they might have like three at 1.2 and three at 1.3 for example to make a six hole piston or a five hole piston where there's just one that's a little bit bigger or one that's a little bit smaller different flow rates different theories different handling characteristics okay now I can go ahead the front shock shaft now the the cartridge is all greased up so I don't need to apply any more grease in there. Now there's no preload, so I'm just going to go through really, really gently. You can see there's excess grease coming out. Go ahead and wipe that bit of grease off. Push the piston all the way down to the bottom. How many times I've forgotten my shock boot at this step. 
So this is where the protective boot goes on. Now you don't have to worry about fitting it yet over the, the top step. We're going to put the shock end on. Super tight plastics on HBs. Really high quality. I mean, that's what holds these things together. Beautiful, nice and straight. Clamping it with the pliers. You need to apply a lot of pressure because, because of the good quality plastics. And then what I'll generally do is do it up all the way and then back a turn and then I'll measure it. Now the droop settings are done. Um, I do it with the droop screws on the car. Some people do it overall shock length. They don't use droop screws, but I like to use the droop screws in the arms and put the chassis on blocks to in fact have it all squared up. That's sort of irrelevant what that number is for the moment. But just lock the vernier off and make sure that it's the same left and right. And it's at this time now where I can tighten up the O-ring. I'm going to apply some, some oil in here. Such a good seal. Now I'm just tightening up the, the O-rings. Oh, that is so smooth with that polish shock shaft. Just getting a feel, making sure that there's no stiction. Beautiful. Okay, now I can go ahead and put that on. And it's at this point now where I will put the shock ball in. Now I can see, I'm gonna zoom in here. I can see here on the plastic, there's a distinct side of a matte sort of finish on the ball on the ball end and a shinier side. Now on that shinier side, that's the side you want to put the ball in because that's going to be the slightly bigger side. And the last thing you want to do is introduce any more stretch than absolutely necessary. Now you definitely don't grease these, apply any lubrication, but the hard anodized coating will act like um oh like teflon anyway give it a really smooth fitting like so really nice a really smooth ball really really tight something that does wear on an eight scale buggy you can imagine the the amount of of work that they do you can see on the top of the piston here it does 1.2 mil written on it i'm going to go ahead and start bleeding it so what i'm going to do is put the the shock up about 30% of the stroke. I'm going to fill the shock up with oil. Let that sit for a second and I'm going to pull that down to the bottom of the stroke and hopefully all the air comes up in one bubble. Like so, one nice big bubble. Now hopefully if I did that right I'll fill it up to like 95%. I can't really tip it over because it'll come out. If I've done that right, when I do the first pump or so, hopefully there should be no great big air bubbles, which there is. See the air bubble coming up. Slightly move the piston around. Just rotate it so slightly. And then I'm gonna put that to the side and leave that rest and that's going to get all the air bubbles out of my damper unit. Now that is the front one so I can put it over here in the shock stand and that will just sit there bleeding away. Okay again with shocks it's very much just a very repetitive process so put that through make sure that there's no preload get the excess grease off That is so, I'm so glad that we uh, took the extra two minutes to 
gives a really nice action. There we go. Put the boot on. Like so. Put the shock end. Lock up the shock and wind up the, the plastics. Now I don't like to use a lot of power tools on my builds because it takes a lot of the feel out of what you're doing. So you can feel when things get tight and loose like that. Now I can see that's tight, that's all the way. So I go one turn undone it should be exactly the same size as the other one need a little bit more do that one up a little bit more and you can see why I went to all that trouble polishing those shock shafts why in fact you do want to use your soft draw pliers. Looks like I've overestimated there. Perfect. Beautiful shock length. So at this point now I can put my boot on. Ways it up. Got a bit of oil in here. This one I've gone for 55 weight oil. One nice big bubble. Fill it up to 95%. Did a better job. There's no air coming out of this one. No air trapped under the piston. I'll let that sit to the side anyway. It's funny that we do such a good job bleeding emulsion shocks because you actually, they operate by mixing a little bit of air into them. Okay, rear ones. Again, exactly the same. Can be a little bit of a tedious job. We wouldn't necessarily do this sort of rebuild at the track but between big races or whatnot at the track, we're generally just changing, changing oil. Let me get the preload right on this first. So you usually want to get it to a point where you've sort of over tightened it. So you can feel it just starting to bind on the O-rings. Which is just about impossible once you've polish the shafts there we go and then you want to back it off just a tiniest little bit perfect and I know that that's really hard to show oh there's a little gem inside the shock boot um, I know that's hard to show on camera but it's just a feel thing get these shock ends on nice and straight clamp it up and wind it up we'll measure this one up Then we'll work on our next one. Put the boot on. Put the ball in. Again on the through on the shiny side. Really got this nice little alloy piece on there that makes this so easy. Not damaging your plastic or the balls. Really nice. Rear shock oil.
rear shock taking a lot more oil, being a lot longer. Here we go. Let's have a look how the bleeding went. Ah, perfect. No air stuck under the piston. Let's rotate it around. A couple of little. Now the reason that you want to do your shock so smooth and somewhat carefully is because once the, the air breaks down and turns into effectively like champagne bubbles, it takes longer for it to, um, to bleed and come to the surface. So I want to keep those air bubbles nice and big. Get this one happening. Like I said, I think it's about every kit I've done, this one not included, I've usually forgotten to put the boot on at least one shock. tend to go on autopilot a bit doing shocks. Not as bad as doing turnbuckles. I think that's every RC builder's pet hate is turnbuckles. Get that done. Now what you don't want to do is stick an Allen key in there and wind it up because it will in fact stretch and damage where the ball has to sit. Again, just getting the right length, left to right. Let's make sure both shops are just a smidgen short this one. Another quarter of a turn and hopefully that's it. Beautiful. Okay, put the boot on, put the ball in, put some oil in. All right, we are hooking along. And the shiny side. There you go. Make sure you don't mix up your shock oils if you're using different front and rear, which I am in this case. In this case, I'm using 45 rear and 55 front. I wouldn't usually use such a big um, difference in front to rear, but I know the driver of this vehicle and how hard they're going to hit the jumps and how much they have their brakes wound up. So causing the front to dip. So hopefully the 55 weight will really help it launch and jump really well. No air coming up, which is nice. Okay, now that's the rear one. So now I'll go back to the first front one that I did. Make sure I put this shock oil to the side. Because now we're going to start bleeding. And for this I'm going to need a one and a half mil Allen key. Going to put a, a little bit of the, the shock grease on here. Make sure the thread's all, all nice. Now there's no O-ring or seal on this. Just goes into the cap. Beautiful. I always just like to get a little bit of grease into that thread before we pump all the oil through. As well as checking the thread, making sure that it's clear of any debris or machining. Swarf. Which it is. And this is when building shocks can get a bit messy final blade okay now I like to put my spring retainer on because that is going to be the actual 
travel of the shock unit. There's no point over bleeding it. Top the front shock up. Put the O-ring. Oh, that's half done. Explain to you about the emulsion. So, HB give you bladders, which is fine and really good, especially if you're racing electric. I really do prefer bladder shocks, personally. But if you're racing nitro, the general consensus is, or if you're really like a supple car, the way to go is emulsion shocks. And for that HB, I've got purpose-made O-rings. Now you can just cut these and put a slit in them so they don't actually work as a bladder. But I like to actually use the right tool for the job, which in this case is an O-ring. So you can build it. So this is a tuning option and it's not gonna make the car, the buggy any faster, just a different characteristic. And I know that the owner will definitely appreciate it. So I'm gonna need four O-rings. Could have cut a bigger hole, made it easy for myself, but no, I like to do things the hard way. One more, and they give you a packet of 10. So, I mean, not that you're really ever gonna damage it, but you do, if, if you happen to drop one or tear one, you've got a packet of 10 there, but they will last. Nice big O-rings. And what they do, they're gonna go inside the shock cap, inside here. So again, I'm just gonna put a tiny little bit of the O-ring grease on the O-ring, and that's just gonna help it seat and stick into the shock cap. Again, I'm not using any metal tools, just the nine steps gizmo just to get it seated. I'm gonna introduce a tiny bit of fluid. Now I'm gonna do the cap up and we'll start bleeding. So in this situation, wind the cap all the way down and I always have the bleed screw at the highest point in the shock. And I have my rag ready to make a mess. Use the nice pit mat. And this will you generally take three shots to get it right. See the oil just starting to come out now. The bleed screw being the highest part in the shock, making sure that the air, the air will come out at the highest point. Compressing that damper unit and tightening that screw. Now it's at this point where I will check it and see if I've actually got rebound in there. And rebound is where the shock is over full. We can see here that tiny bit of, and again, it's just a feel thing. I can actually feel that it's a little bit over full. So I'm just gonna squeeze it down all the way and loosen off the screw. I can do this on zoom actually. Like so, if you can capture that. Unwind the screw. A Little bit of oil comes out and wind it back in. Again, keeping it the highest point. And that should be done. Yeah, all that, all that that squish is there, that is just the shock boot. That is not over full with oil. You will feel it, you will see it start to like um, extend. So that is just the crushing of the shock boot. That is perfect. And there's no air in there. There's no really loud squeaking. Hide it up to the mic. That is a really nice shock. So usually it does take from experience two or three times to get an emulsion shock right. 
and the front one I usually do the the bleed screws facing out on the car and I like to put that protector on the front the top shock portion that should just go back in by by thumb hopefully here we go get that bush in give it all a nice wipe down and that is one of four shocks really happy with that put that back on the shock stand go back and do the next one again put the spring retainer on put the o-ring inside the cap a little bit of oil in the top there so I might just put a little bit more in the shock do up the shock body get my allen key ready because the last thing you want to do is introduce air into the shock try and do it all in one foul movement got some oil coming out get that bleeder in don't it's only like a two and a half mil size screw you don't have to absolutely reef on it as far as tightening it up it's like to give it a wipe over to make sure that there's no check that body actually all right let's have a look how we did yeah it's over full we can see see how it's I'll get in on the zoom see if I push it in it comes out quite a way it's rebound some people you can tune that in for various conditions but not in this we want a dead shock or no rebound so I'm going to go ahead compress the shock take the screw out while holding it all the way to the bench take the screw out until I get some oil like so put the screw back in while having it clamped to the bench and we should be good you can see now that it's not coming out at all beautiful go ahead double check it all put the put it the, the uh, bleed screw to the outside because during the day from morning to lunch you might want to give it a quick bleed if you notice that the car's jumping or behaving funny it's probably because the temperatures change um, and these ones not having any compensation now not being a bladder shock they might need a quick bleed through the day and in that case you just compress the suspension arm up you leave the shock on the car suppress compress the suspension arm up um, you know completely pressing the shock in and then again cracking the screw holding the arm up you'll see a little bit of oil lock it up and then yeah that's good they are so smooth silky smooth beautiful HB shocks okay rear one again nothing is changing here in the way I'm doing these other than me not being prepared yet just gonna again just me fussing just checking the threads making sure there's no swarf in the bleed screw beautiful 
Next one. And it gives you a really good feel for it as well. There we go. The top cap O-rings. Okay, first rear shock, spring retainer on. A little bit more shock oil in there. Rear ones are gonna leak more because obviously there's a lot more leak more, they're gonna bleed more because there's a lot more stroke. So I'm probably not gonna need to prime up the cap on the rear one. Let's see how much mess we can make with this rear shock. Again, bleed hole, the highest point. Compressing the shock. And no oil came out. So that's a good case in point where I didn't actually have enough oil in there to bleed it. So hopefully I haven't introduced any air. Let's have a look. The oil is beautiful, nice and clean. As far as no no bubbles in the in the oil. Go again. You always have to make a little bit of mess. There we go. I'm sure that that's more oil coming out of it now than I actually put in there. Anyway, it's always a way. Get that screw in. Give it a good old wipe off. Best thing is to clean as you go. If you don't clean as you go, you'll end up in a right mess. And I know, I've been there. One of the messiest RC builders. Now again, I expect it to be over full. So you can see here, it's got a lot of rebound in it. I can feel it. So squeeze it down. Get my nine steps, 1.5 mil driver in there. Take out the screw. Oh, there comes the oil and then back in. I think I'm gonna to have to do it again. So it's still got a little bit of rebound in there. So again, press it down to the bench, keep the bleed at the tallest part. Another tiny bit of oil coming out. There we go. I'm pretty confident that that is going to be it. Yeah. No rebound in there. Perfect. All right, we'll put that on. Get these shocks finished off. Rear one can go on that side. here tiny bit more oil just to make sure I can make a big mess o-ring always unwind it until it clicks when you're doing the shock caps because the thread is just so fine spring retainer and get my screw ready in my Nine steps, Allen driver. Okay, here we go, bleed this one. Here comes the oil. Wind this one in. Give 
give it a good wipe off. There we go. Again, I bet it's probably going to have rebound in it. Yeah. Definitely. Here we go. Get this last bit of oil out. Beautiful. Yep. It's exactly what I want to see. Double check that. Give the top cap a tighten. Beautiful. Off we go. Put the top bush in. Just making sure I do it the opposite way. So it all goes back together looking. Nice and neat. Okay. So that is just about the shocks done. There's one little final step that I will do. And that is something I like to do once the shocks are sealed up. Here I am forgetting to put a uh, lower shock mount ball in. Click. <clears throat> so the last thing that I like to do to my shocks is to put uh, lines on the retainer at 180 mil, uh, 180 degree marks on the spring retainer. On the, sorry, on the preload collar. And what that does, it just helps me adjust and fine tune the shocks. Because sometimes you might adjust it in warm up or something. So just got a little sanding stick and I've just got the anodizing and just made a line in it. And I'll do that again on the other side directly opposite. Now you can do that with a Dremel or a nail file or whatever you have on hand. Some people do them every 90 degrees, so you've got four steps to a rotation. Some people just do one. There's another one. Simple little line there. And then that does help you adjust, put in the O-ring. Saves it coming loose. And that does save, um, oh, the O-ring so, the reason I have the o-ring in there is to um, save it coming loose. So I can tell now, I'll show you on the overhead, that if I'm in warm up and obviously the car's not on setup block so I don't have a ride height thing, but I go, oh, I just wanna, just wanna go up on the right height of turn. So I just go one, two, and I can do that left and right. And I know that that is a turn and it can do left and right even. So if it was a turn, if it was all perfectly even before, you can do a turn knowing that, in fact, it's still perfectly even. If you don't have those lines on there or a line on there, then obviously you're just sort of guessing that you've done a, done a turn. You can put the front spring on now. Big, beefy shock. Look at that. So I know I've gone all the way up and then one turn down. That is one front shock unit all done. Okay, let's do the other ones. Now the reason that I do this last step is to make sure that I don't risk getting any filings, dirt or debris inside the damper unit. Because you want it to be pristine. Last thing you want is swarf inside your shock. But now they're all sealed up. There we go. So the line on there. Put in the O-ring. There's no need for any lubrication. Do the other front one. I 
again unwind it until it clicks like so then wind it up very easy to cross thread and damage the threads on these really fine items so unwind it until it clicks and then you should be right wind it all the way up and then down a turn there we go I'll know that left and right now are perfectly even and that was a rear shock what a deal there we go gold springs on the front blue springs on the back there's a little paint code here and that's what we'll go with on this setup anyway so I'll probably go this one to give it a little bit of preload during assembly I'll go five turns one two three four five six seven eight nine ten no end of that's five turns there we go rear shock front shock you can see the size difference between the two the lengths and yeah like i said shocks can be quite a tedious job some people actually hate doing shocks obviously when you do a kit for the first time it's probably going to take a little bit longer especially if you're putting preload marks on the preload collars and polishing shock shafts and that when you're changing oil at the shocks or sorry when you're changing oil in the shocks at the track it usually just takes five minutes because it's just the top cap comes off like so Get my o-ring in there there we go reverse it until it until it clicks there we go Just make sure that the top of the shock is tight. So all the way up and down a turn for the front. Gold spring. last one for the rear and if you're wondering what I'm using here it's just the essential nine step standing stick something that's always close by hand when I'm doing a build go that little little bit of sanding there just giving it the our reference points see if I can get my uh, o-ring in there we go unwind it there we go click Now this one was all the way up and six turns down. So 12 lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11, 12. Perfect. Put my rear spring on, the blue one. Sure the top's tight beautiful 
There we go, there is our four shocks. Now I've got the bladders left over, we'll keep them as a tuning option. We've got a whole packet of pistons there untouched and we've got a big selection from the, the open packet. So that is, that has been part one of my HB Racing D8 World Spec build. I'm Brett from Hearns Hobbies and thanks for watching me build up these mighty fine shocks. See you next time guys.